come in now and it looks so dry, you'd think, why do they need drainage? But um, I can tell you at times where we're standing now, we'd be in a metre of water or better. It leaches nutrients and um, kills a lot of the, a lot of our pastures are self-generating, so it'll kill a lot of the seed and then you've got to go back and re-sow and creates a big expense. Instead of having to physically pump all the water off the farm, it'll be just naturally uh, draining away uh, as it falls. So hopefully then it's, it um, won't be causing any issues to us. We designed the works so that they uh, store a certain amount of water in their subcatchment until there's available that fall and then water will flow away. So instead of lying around for three months, it might, it might be there for two or three weeks. It really does involve a lot of conversations, a lot of talking, a lot of listening. So, you know, raising what we, what we want to do, but then talking to the landowners about how that might fit in with, with their needs, as well as with like the cultural needs, environmental needs, and then engineering needs. So it's kind of a real balancing act, which is why these drains sometimes take such a long time to get off the ground. identified that down in this low area that we're in now there was a number of scar trees identified so that triggered the need to do some further archaeological um, investigation I suppose. The drain was diverted around that into the property that we're standing in now which um, this landowner actually isn't benefiting from the drain so he's allowed the drain to come up come through his property has given up land basically so that those trees would be protected and wouldn't be impacted on by the, um, the drain construction.